Hi and welcome to another Demo Plus. I'm Erica from Simply Craft and this is the second part of the series to make this design here. And in the second part we're concentrating on the embellishment, the angel and the wings. And we're using the rust and patina um, materials from Pentart. I'm using an archival cast from Prima and this face I'm going to use this one here as you can see you've got six in a pack so I think they're made of resin they feel like resin going by the the kind of uh, look on the back of them so this is my first this is my first piece and I'm just going to remove the screw eye they're easy to remove it's just I just don't want it in this piece but if you were going to make a necklace it'd be really useful to keep it but for our purposes not so as you can see they're really easy just grab it and unscrew it and then I'll just use a bit of grunge paste and fill it up so I'll just grab a little bit there and just fill the hole I sand it down later. But it's dead easy. No mess. Job done. So that's my that's my starting piece. So while that little bit's drying up there, I'm going to show you. Oh, I've chosen the wings, and this time I'm going to choose these wings because we're using the tag shape. I think these wings would be better. So get my grunge paste out and I'm going to put them through the stencil onto black card well, let's do them near the edge so I don't have to cut so much dead easy just run the paste through There we have it there's our wings obviously we've got to let those dry now and then we just clean this up and all the excess goes back into the pot and a little tip is if you scrape it onto the sides here they then go rock hard and they will not you can't add water to them once they once they've dried they've dried so i tend to scrape it into the bottom and then before i close the lid spritz of water do it up and then you'll keep it better than uh, if you just scrape it on the side just give it a quick clean oops have a clean up now Right, so let's concentrate on our first piece and this is the face and I'm going to do, if you can see, a patina effect and let me show you now what you need. It's a two part, you've got a patina powder which is actual metal, but a very fine powder and you've got patina effect reagent and they've got different colours on them so they I use a combination of them all to create a nice really lovely aged patina I think you can see from there you can see you've got blues you've got the dulling of the colour you can see it's very bright so it dulls the colour down but you've got things to blue you've got real dark green well dark you've got a real green in the background there you've got some white but it really makes it look like it's been out in and got really weathered so we'll get started right so I've got my heavy body gel here the matte version and I'm just going to stipple it all over the face we want to make sure we get it all because we want the powder to stick to the whole of the shape 
don't want any patches and just make sure I've got it all so I'm stippling on the glue so I don't have the brush strokes right and I'll just take a scrap piece of paper oh no don't want to do that scrap piece of paper let's just make sure I didn't put finger on oh, I'm getting all bits in it now good job it doesn't matter and then I'm going to oh, pour the powder over it now I really need a clean brush also a clean dry brush okay so I've let this dry off a little bit and now I'm just going to take the excess and put it all back so I just brush it all down and there you can see it looks like real metal right let's take that excess off I think that's looking good if there's any gaps you can always just put a little bit more a little thin layer of gel on let's just smear a bit on and then just dip it in and get a little bit more on there a little bit more there it's hard to see the sides sometimes when you're working there we go oh, a little bit there missed that bit right, we'll just leave that to one side a minute while I clear up this powder is lovely but it's so it's very fine it looks like a brass colour so I'm wondering if it's actual brass powder. It doesn't actually say. But it smells like real metal, so it must be uh, something like that. So we'll put that, put that all away. Oh, there we go. Still made a mess. That's typical of me. So that's our lady all gilded up. So we'll just put her to one side a minute because I'm going to brush her again and just to take the excess off because you can see there's still some on there. But the next bit we're going to do is we're going to put the rusting powder on the wings. It doesn't matter if that's... I'm going to cut that all off anyway. This, <laughs> i got to get rid of some of this gold though like I belong to a Bond movie right so our next bit is the rusting powder rust effect powder and we're going to put it on the wings cut them out first that would help I'm just thinking of the edges if it does uh, ruin my scissors or then you've got the black edge when you cut it so I'm better off cutting it now. This very simple design anyway, so it won't be too difficult. I'll leave the middle. It'll keep them in place. And then I can choose whether or not I keep them in the same distance apart or whether I move that. And snip it's the last bit gone and there we have it right now we do the glue <laughs> oh dear dab the glue on making sure we get it all in this is why I use the heavy body gel because this uh, powder is quite thick so I think the better the glue, the more it's going to stick. A good PVA glue will do it. Right, so I find myself a scrap of paper. Oops. And then we sprinkle on the iron powder. Now it's this really heavy, it's hard to describe, but it's just iron filings I think and then we just there's a nice oh some of them are like 
little balls of iron so you kind of got to keep it under control or it'll run away with you so but you can see it's really really thick you get a really I, I mean I even like it like that I think it looks great and put the excess away then I better pop my glue brush in some water so we've got our wings and we've got our head so now I'm just gonna you can see take some of that excess off I didn't the first time and I just found the the um, the agents just sort of bubbled on the surface rather than do their job so that's because there was so much powder on the surface it wasn't it was just sort of clinging to the powders you can see how little you use but I love it I mean even like that I just love it but I that's too too clean for me got to dirty it up so that one's ready now that one will take a little while to dry but while it is I'll be starting on this one so these are the reagents the thing that makes them patinate it's not an instant thing you have to t you have to be patient with it so this will be one that I do this to start with and then I'll come back to it at, uh, later on in the day so I'm just putting some dabs of it on. Can you see it's even now it's still still reacting. So what I'll do is with a brush I'll just make sure it just actually clings in. But the more layers you put on it, the more the patinating liquid actually does do what it's meant to do. That's bluish green. Then we've got the light blue and we'll put a couple of dobs on. You see, the bit that we haven't touched yet is bubbling up. And the others are just going in correctly. And then we'll put a little bit of the green on. This is my favourite one because it's, that's the one that's got the real green colour. Now, obviously you can't see anything because we've got to leave it and we've just got to come, come away. And then if you check on it and it's not quite strong enough then you just put extra dabs on and you just build up the patination from that so that's a kind of day job you know you have to just check on it every now and again and then the following day you'll have your you'll have your look the rust technique is a little bit quicker and in these ones you've got the yellow red brown and yellow and then I think with the rusting it's almost instant Oops. and again just put in some little dobs around it I like to do it kind of next to each other because the rust can be kind of all over the place so you can have little blobs of one colour and then it can be different somewhere else does that make sense hopefully so there's quite a strong vinegary smell in one of them I think it's that one and then again with a brush just kind of mooch it in make sure it's completely covered but you can see that's already you can see it's already rusting and when it's dry it will have a the nice thing about the rusting one is it's one coat and that's it. The patina takes a little bit more of an effort. You have to, you know, especially with that green, add a little bit more. But you really have to be patient with the the patina. It's not gonna it's not gonna go straight away. You're gonna have to take your time. But you can see it already kind of losing its um, high shine finish. So we'll come back to this and you'll see the finished product. So I've come back a few hours later and as you can see the wings are completely rusted. 
and they're ready to go. Um, with the head, I've got some lovely green and blue patination going on, but there's still a few areas that maybe are a little bit too shiny. So it's just a case of just adding a little bit more to the mix. Like I said, the patinating can take a little bit longer than the, the rusting. But you do get a really authentic look when you use these materials. Just a case of just adding a little dab more. So I need to leave that again for a couple of hours and hopefully they'll be all ready to put together. Right, I'm back the next day and I'm really pleased how they turned out. So we've got our face here and you can see how much of the patination has gone on. But like I said, I put a couple of layers on just to really build it up. Um, if there's any bits you don't like, you can, with a wet brush, you can just wet and wipe some of it away. So if it looks a bit odd, you can get rid of it. So you can actually manipulate it. But I love, if you see there, it's picked up the rust because there was some of the powder on the on the, t on the table. So I quite like that. So I added an extra touch to it. And I, I sort of suspect this will change again as it completely dries because it doesn't feel completely dry yet. But anyway, we'll work with it. And of course, our wings are perfect. So that's really got a rusty look now. So I shall put my rubbishy paper aside and that's the piece of work that we've got to work on now. So it's looking a bit dark now so I'm going to do what I did on the previous one and use some die cut ivy. I've got some um, from an old card because I don't believe I've got the die any the die anymore to cut anymore. So um, luckily I stuck it down with Herma and I'm just going to pinch it off of here. Doesn't matter if it doesn't come off perfectly because I'm going to colour it because it's not quite the right colour. Oh maybe I use some uh, other stuff on that bit. Never mind. It's enough to work with. I'll just take a few. This uh, this card is getting it was completely surrounded with ivy. Now it's uh, quite a lot less. Never mind. It was an old card. Oh, that one's stuck down. Oops. That one's stuck down with glossy accents. Um. I'll see how much I need. I'll take that one off because it is definitely stuck down and doesn't look so odd now so my ivy just take off the bits I don't need I really want a bit of whatever that is I'm thinking and these are the two colors I used in the distress oxides again using distress oxides because they're opaque so they will actually work on top of colors so I thought that was quite useful um, but the cracked pistachio will look a little bit more like the verdigris so I thought it would bring that colour out so we'll get some of that colour over the top can you see it's changed quite dramatically already so it definitely works on top of these colours you couldn't do that with another kind of ink so oh, where did that go? oh there it is And then I'll try a little bit of brown just to on the edges. In places. And then I'll give them a quick blast just to see if their colour changes at all. I think I will add a little bit of the peeled paint as well just to 
add some of that yellow tone because it was looking a bit too cold. play between the a lot of them really I'm much happier with them now and they have although subtly they have changed color now I'm ready to kind of have some kind of idea about where everything's going. I'm thinking, because I did leave that blank space, that she would go there and then maybe we could have some of the, the ivy coming through here. I just don't want to cover up too much of that lovely background, that's all and a little bit here that might be enough actually yeah I suspect that will be enough and then we need a quote so I have used the Tim Holtz big chat stickers because um, if you see with this one I used, I used um, do everything with faith and so I'm thinking something I'm thinking something like timeless. I'm sure I saw that there. Yeah, timeless. And let me see. Oh beauty, timeless beauty. So we'd get that there. Because I'm thinking this sort of ageing and with every, as it degrades down, it's still beautiful, if that makes sense, hopefully. And obviously I don't want to stick white down because that's going to look really odd. So I'm going to ink the edges. On that one I use the um, blue, but I'm see what the brown does. Being very very gentle. I didn't re-ink it and I'm just doing it really really subtly. But it's taking down the colour because it's a bit too white. There's no real white there now and it would look odd and we are doing everything quite dark on this. So I think we're ready to stick down now. And then that will go like maybe there. Because this is a very bumpy surface, I'm actually going to in do it with glue. So I'm going to leave them there a minute until I decide where they're going. But I'm using my heavy body gel to stick everything down. Because it's such an uneven surface, um, a nice big blob of this will just make sure nothing moves and because it's matte hopefully it won't make no shiny patches if it if the glue seeps out so I have that somewhere like so oops the only problem is with the gel is you have to leave it or do I want to get rid of that little nip that bit okay right so gluing all my pieces to get oh it'll come together I'm sure <laughs> so this is the fiddly bit now because I wanted to do it in situ so I knew where everything was going um, I did have a little one there didn't I what have I done with it that's probably that one there. Goodness knows how that got there. Stick that one on the end. Coming out. Now where did I have her? About there. So let's just put a big blob on the back. So 
Let's just so it will stick down really well. Oops. Oh, oh. This is the fiddly bit now. And the trick is glue it down, walk away and leave it alone because it's so easy to move it and then it will go wrong. You can see because of all the bumps and you've got to have enough glue there so it captures it a bit like silicone glue and this is why you have to leave it walk away and leave it right that sounds like it's stuck down and timeless beauty let's get that glued now and again push it down because if it curls up that will eventually be tacky enough to hold it but it's worth doing it because if you just use a sticker there's a chance with the heat or change of temperature they'll just fall off hopefully that's on straight I think so so that's pretty much it finished um, I just want to show you um, a last couple of things that I did but obviously that's now got to dry um, I've got some shading underneath and that's done with that painter's grey so just a little bit of the paint underneath to do the shading and on the ivy leaves I gave them a little bit more can you see it's, they're a little bit bland I've added some highlights with a gel pen but then softened it with a brush so it's got a little bit more texture going on and there we go that is how I created that box and as you can see you, you're never going to get the same thing twice and that's the nice and the beauty about it is it's always going to look different no matter how many times I could re have recreated this and never actually got that again which is what I love about it is so there's some real random techniques going on there which you'd never be able to recreate exactly but anyway thank you for watching